Hi, I'm Alan Smith. You know, the holidays are a festive time of the year. You can bring family and friends together and entertain in your home. So in today's show, we're gonna jump right in, look at some great ways to make your home more festive the natural way. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank our sponsors. The garden tours are made possible by Gilbert H. Wild & Son, who've been growing beautiful perennials since 1885. Ralston Family Farms, a farm family producing delicious rice for your table. First Community Bank, whose heart is in the community, as well as Sun Patients, Super Cal Petunias, and Dragon's Breath Celosia, and Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Check out my website to learn more about the brands we love. Holly is one of those plants often associated with the holidays, but it's such an interesting family of plants. This is called Nellie R. Stevens, and you can see, look at all of the berries. We can thank our honeybees for that. This is an evergreen holly, the one we mostly associate with the holidays, but then this is the deciduous form. This is Ilex verticiliata, and these deciduous hollies can make stunning displays for the holidays, and I use them every year. As I mentioned, hollies are a big family, a fascinating family. Take these beautiful trees. This is actually the American holly, or a cultivar of it, and this variety is called savanna. And you can see it's just loaded with all kinds of gorgeous berries. And just behind me, you'll see a holly hedge. This is needlepoint holly, and it certainly takes the knife, meaning that it can be shorn into a beautiful hedge. Now here's another species of holly I want to share with you. This is called Yopon holly. It's a native, and what's wonderful about it is the leaf actually contains caffeine. It's an edible leaf, and actually the Native Americans through the South use this as a drink. So we grow it here because the birds love it and also makes a great hedge. So the next time you think about hollies, remember they come from a big and interesting family. There's a lot of talk these days about rosemary. It's an herb used in so many ways, for cooking, for medicine. For 2,000 years, it's been used as a stress reliever, a great herb for your skin, as well as a memory booster. It's an herb with a very distinct flavor and aroma, and I love using it in many things. But first, I wanna talk about how I grow rosemary. This is just rosemary officinalis, one of the common rosemaries. This rosemary has experienced temperatures as low as 14 degrees, and it continues to come back. People ask me, how do you grow this hedge of rosemary in our zone eight? 
If you want to grow it, you want to grow it in the ground uh, in well-drained soil and it needs full sun. If you're growing in a climate where it drops below, let's say 14 degrees, uh, you'll want to grow rosemary in containers and be able to pull it in inside so you give it some protection on those really cold nights or stretches of winter. You want to make sure it gets plenty of sunlight, but you want to cut down on the water if you bring rosemary in for it to survive from one season to the next. Because rosemary is such an ancient herb with so many traditions and that it's evergreen, it's the perfect herb for holiday decorating. So why don't I give you an idea that you can use in your own holiday festivities. I'm Jay Schwanke, I'm the flower expert. That's what they call me. I was born at a flower convention. So I am a fourth generation florist. Our Thanksgiving was, Thanksgiving was over with at 10 o'clock in the morning because we had places to decorate. I like Alan's natural style because I think that a little bit of creative naturalism, especially when it comes to Christmas, makes it very unique and very homespun. And that creates and generates huge memories. Jay, I'm always looking for easy things that I can bring into the house during the holidays because everybody's pressed for time, and you're the master of these. Well, thank you. I love the fact that we can have a little Christmas tree. Yeah. Some people like to have a permanent tree in their right. house. This brings in fragrance. Sure. Or we can set it on an end table. Or if you're challenged with space, it's a great way to have a yeah. little tree in the house. And you're building it from bits and pieces. Exactly. So maybe the boughs that come off the bottom of the tree. Yep. Well, and you let me go out and harvest some holly. Right. And what I like about this, too, is that we shopped the house. These little mint julep cups that I've collected over the years are perfect holders for these tiny little trees. I love it. And you have them in different sizes, too. Yeah, so, I know. so I got a bigger one. But I wanted to show you, too, we stacked the foam. And so by stacking the foam, you don't necessarily need a cone inside there, but you can have your foam stack. Mm. And that gives you that elevation, which gives you a cute little apical yeah. shape. It really encourages that conical shape. And what you did here is you stacked the piece of floral foam right. here uh, and then pinned it with uh, just a stick. I just took a stick and drove it straight down inside. Right. And, and that'll it's be very firm. It'll yep. stay there. Yep. And Good. then we can add water sure. and they'll last through the holidays. So All then right. these little pieces just go in and we start to shape our tree. I like to pick a tall one too. So right. So you get your, yeah. your height there. So that's your guide. And then I just strip down the stems too so that they'll insert in the foam easily. Yep. And I just kind of start in a triangle shape. You know, the thing about these little trees is they're beautiful for tabletops. So if you're doing a table setting, right. um, they're great for that. The small ones. And they're also long lasting. I love if you had a party and you could set one in a place setting. And you can get creative with the greens that you use. You don't have to use traditional holiday greens. It would be fun to use boxwood. Right. Or Eliagnus. Oh, yeah. Eliagnus with the silver. This, that that silvery gray is so nice. I'm so envious that you have. We don't have that in Michigan. The other thing that's so great about this is that, you know, this is something that you can do ahead of time. Right. And um, it doesn't take a lot of time. And they're so inexpensive. These are fun. Look at these. Now we have four. We do. And I love the big one that we have in the kitchen. Exactly. It looks so, so great. Those, just throughout the house, a fun way to bring that fragrance sure. inside. Sure, small, medium, and large in the kitchen. Anything else we can do to enhance the longevity of these so they'll last longer? Absolutely, an anti-transpirant. Yeah. So spraying it with an anti-transpirant, and this seals the molecular structure of it and helps yeah. it. You, we use them outside in the garden, obviously. Well, it keeps the, it keeps the 
H2O, the water from leaving the leaves. It right. holds, seals it in, and so it, it, it really works. We use this on our Christmas tree, and that, that, that always helps. It takes, it's hard to do a Christmas tree with a spray bottle like that. Right. And so what I do with that is I get a couple gallons, and I put it into, a, into an insecticide sprayer. Yeah, you just spray the whole tree down, right. bring it in, and you'll Perfect. get 10 more days of life out of the tree. Absolutely. Jay, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Well, thanks for making Christmas trees with me. Oh, it was great fun. It's important to keep our pets in mind when getting ready for Christmas. If you choose to get a real tree, remember, needles tend to be sharp and can also be toxic to your pets because of the chemicals used to keep trees fresh longer. Whether you choose a real or artificial, keep your pets out of the tree and make sure they don't chew on the needles. For all trees, here are a few things to keep in mind when decorating. Don't let your pets get the idea that ornaments are toys. Decorate your tree with them out of the room so they don't think it's playtime. Teasing your pet with ornaments or putting catnip on your tree is never a good idea. Avoid tinsel because it can be a choking hazard. Artificial snow looks great but can be toxic if ingested. Be sure to place the more delicate decorations, like glass or ceramic, higher up in the tree. Use wire to hang your ornaments securely to the tree so they cannot be knocked off by your pet. Check your wires regularly for signs of chewing. You can also spray wires and needles with citrus spray to deter your pet from chewing. Now this might be self-explanatory, but stay away from edible ornaments like popcorn or candy canes. These are just a few steps to keep our furry little friends safe during the holidays. Poinsettias are a traditional part of the holiday, and I love having a red poinsettia in the house. At the same time, I sometimes want to add an accent to that poinsettia. So this is a great accent of natural materials that we can add in the front of our poinsettia. We've picked up our poinsettia, it comes in a plastic pot. We're gonna actually drop it down into a clay pot, but first we'll fashion this great accent that'll go on the front of the plant. We're using a bunch of spray millet, I'm gonna to add to that a permanent berry branch. And the natural millet is all cut. This is one bunch that comes this way. So I'm just gonna grab it there with my thumb and I'm gonna extend that one branch out this side. We use two of the sponge mushrooms and the sponge mushrooms have a wire attached to them. So we're able to put those on either side and those sponge mushrooms then create a focal area for us where we'll place our pine cone. So since we have these gathered up, we'll use one of our wires first and tie this together. We'll cinch it up tight and twist it off. Then we'll use another wire and attach the wire to our pine cone. I picked a nice big sized pine cone, or you could use two smaller ones. We'll wrap that wire around the pine cone, and we're gonna bring that pine cone and put it in that focal area right here. And we'll attach that wire around the center. So the pine cone covers up what's bundling our bunch together. We can cut off any excess wires. And then we'll gather these stems together. Now these stems are actually gonna be how I'm gonna put it into the plant. So I'm gonna bend those stems towards the back and we'll cut those about this long. Now 
then we'll take that stem and push it right down into our poinsettia. Then our poinsettia drops down inside our pot and we can adjust our berry branches so they look natural and accent our plant. It's a simple way to create a beautiful accent on your poinsettia for the holidays. Let me show you how to make snow globes. They're really easy. It's a great project for kids. What you want to do is you want to just come up with a little scene. You know, find a figure like this, maybe a little tree. What you want to do is you want to super glue these to the underside of a fruit jar. Now this really needs to dry for 24 hours. And so yesterday, I actually put this together so I'd be able to show you. Now I did this one with a much smaller lid. This is with a pint jar. So now what you want to do is you want to create your solution. The solution is very simple, water and glycerin. Now the reason for the glycerin is the glycerin is viscous, meaning it thickens the water. And the more glycerin you use, well, the slower your snow will fall. So what I like to use is about two or three tablespoons of the glycerin. And now it's a matter of the snow. You can use anything you want. I'm being kind of traditional here, so I'm going with all white with just a little bit of color in the glitter. So I have about a tablespoon of glitter here, just pouring it in like that and turning it upside down, dunking the little guy. There we go. And then I take this screw ring, twist it down like that, and then I shake it up. And there he is. From the garden home, I'm Alan Smith. I really need your help. I have family coming into town for the holidays and I really want to impress them. I keep seeing these fancy tablescapes on TV and in magazines, but I really don't think I have the resources to pull it off. You think you could give me a few pointers and help me out? Melissa, thanks for your message. And this is right up my alley. 
it's really a lot easier than you think. You can get creative by just using some candles, greenery, and actually some construction paper. Now I've got an idea I want to show you. It's easy to do, but I'd like for you to try it using your own personal touch. See, Melissa, just a little imagination and creativity can go a long way. I'd love to see what you come up with, and good luck. And hey, any of you YouTube watchers out there, if you've got some suggestions for Melissa, make sure you post them here. Also, if you have any questions, I'd love for you to upload a video response, and hey, we may feature it on the show. Tis the season for decorating the tree, hanging those lights, decking the halls in general, but most importantly, spending time with family and loved ones. I hope today's show has inspired you to get in the holiday spirit. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Mm, so good. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell for notifications.